This is Philip today, foraging wild edibles, harvesting crab apples, and making them into a wild crab apple jelly. Stay tuned. all these lovely crab apples ready to go i have tasted them they are a little tart crab apples are tart they are not as sweet as apples that you get in the store and that are grown on farms they are a wild apple and they are tart but these ones here aren't uh horrible they're actually pretty good so i would encourage you taste your crab apples before you pick them and decide to do something with them but uh, yeah, you can harvest the crab apples. You can always add sugar to them, whatever kind of sugar you like, and uh, make them into a wild crab apple jelly like we're doing here today. From the last video, somebody had asked me why I use freezer containers. I carry freezer containers and fill those as I go. There's several reasons why I do that. Uh, first of all, if I go out foraging, I'm going to find different things and I'm going to pick them and I might find multiple things and I don't want them all mixed in together. So having separate containers is good for that. Another thing, I put them all in my backpack. Freezer containers are cheap and they're all the same size. They're a uniform size. They're lightweight. Uh, so to me, it just makes sense to get that and uh, use those fill those up I can take my stuff home put a lid on it fit as many in the pack as I can um, I know about how many fit in my pack and that's what I carry just like this today uh, we'll fill them up and see how many we get Try to keep the leaves out of it as I go. I don't know why. It maybe takes a little longer, but less to clean up later. If you saw our apple harvesting video where we're harvesting our own apples off of our own mini farm, you may uh, basically you may remember uh, some of the things I said about apples in there. Uh, it's basically these are basically the same thing. Um, the, Wild apples are going to be uh, more bitter, more tart. The green ones, for sure, you don't want that. They're going to be too tart, really, to eat. But as they're turning color, as they're turning red, uh, they're going to be, oh, that's not good. <laughs> they're going to be better. They're going to be um, not as tart. Now, you want to, before you harvest a bunch of them, you want to taste them. You want to make sure that it's what you want. Um, yeah, like these I've already tasted. They're tart, but they're not real bad. They're, there's a little bit of sweetness there. Nothing wrong with it. It's good apple. So since I like them, I can add sugar to them, make them a little bit sweeter. That's pretty much all there is to it. Just pick them, fill your boxes. Because this is a wild tree, I'll try not to harvest everything. I want to leave some for the wildlife. I want to leave some to drop and perhaps grow another tree as well. But uh, yeah, there's quite a bit here, so I'm probably going to harvest uh, probably as much as I can, and there will probably be plenty left when I'm done.
Okay, so that's 10 one quart containers. And basically my backpack is full. I could get 12 in there, but I only brought 10 containers. And so I'm done picking for now. I'm going to uh, come back with a bucket and reinforcements. Well, I'm back with reinforcements and we have a three and a half gallon bucket that we are going to fill with crab apples. bucket full, take it back and start processing these things. Okay, so what we do with these little apples, we take them and we just look at them. Now this one's bad, obviously, it's got a big hole in it. Uh, but you, you pull the stem out and you pinch off the uh, blossom end and then you wash them. But this one's bad, so we're going to throw it out. Then, once you throw them out. <laughs> we have some here that are already washed and ready to go. The uh, stems pulled, the uh, blossom end is taken out, and you have to cut them. Just got to make sure that they're good inside and there's nothing in there that they look like an apple. And any seeds fall out, you know, we just kind of brush them out. We don't spend a lot of time taking the seeds out, we just kind of brush them out quick because. There's nothing wrong with eating the seeds. I know some people think that there's cyanide in them and all that, and there's trace amounts of that, but uh, seeds aren't gonna, apple seeds aren't gonna hurt you, at least they've never hurt us. Uh, you'd have to eat quite a bit to get any harm from it, as far as I'm aware of. It's never harmed us, we've never had a problem. And so, We'll bucket. scrape some out, but there's still some in there. And so from here, we would then take them and put them in a pot. We have a big pot, and we'll just throw them in there. And we will fill this pot, and then we'll start cooking them down. And we'll cook them down. Uh, what do we do? put in here? A cup and a half, two cups of water for pretty much a full pot of apples. So we will be putting some of our apples that are ready with the crab apples. Crab apples are, uh, they're not as sweet. You don't want to make apple butter with just those. You'll have to add a lot of sugar. And there's really, as even though it looks like there's a lot, it's not that much once they start cooking down. And so you got to add other apples with them at least 50% maybe even more it depends on the uh, crab apples so since we do have some other apples ready we will be putting those with these whenever we add our apples we will be coring those we won't let any seeds from those in there because seeds do add to the bitterness a little bit and so for the crab apples it's too much to try to remove all the seeds for our apples though we will be uh, coring them and basically uh, those seeds won't be getting in there. Now one thing that we do is we leave the uh, skins on and since the skins are on we just run everything through the blender. We'll cook it down, run it through the blender. We'll show you that in the next steps. Okay so from here we just have them in a big pot. Uh, the pot is 
three quarters of the way full. There's about a cup and a half of water in here. And you bring it to a boil and you just keep it boiling and you have to constantly stir the apples and uh, constantly keep it stirred and try and get everything until it's uh, a more of a mushy consistency. From here, once this is done and everything's good and soft, we'll run them through the blender and that'll grind up everything real fine, any skins that are on there, any seeds that happen to be in there, uh, everything will get ground up real fine. After that, we'll, uh, we'll sh sugar to taste. We'll put everything in a big pot and we'll sugar to taste, make sure it's how we like it. And then after that, we'll begin to uh, put them in jars for canning. All right, so we cooked the apples okay. in this pot, brought them over here to the blender, and we blend everything together. And from there, we're putting them in this big pot. And everything will get put in there together, and we'll get a more consistent product. Okay, so the apples have all been uh, boiled until they got um, mushy and uh, we had um, let's see we, we put everything together the uh, our apples as well as the um, crab apples they've been boiled and they've been run through the blender and we've as they've been done we've been putting them in this big pot this is a 24 quart Pot. and once everything was done uh, it was maybe half full a little more than half full about and anyway we've been cooking it down and uh, basically for apple butter you want it to be thick and so you you pretty much have to stir it constantly so it doesn't scorch I don't like it scorched none of us like it scorched so we have to uh, stir it constantly so now it has reduced to about a third of what's in this pot uh, about a third of the volume is what's left so that's 24 quart pot that's about eight quarts of apple butter and it's almost done it's fairly sweet our apples are fairly sweet so we didn't really uh, add much sugar we added about a cup to the whole thing and as far as cinnamon we've added I've added almost most of this container this is 2.37 ounces and uh, pretty much I added basically the whole thing there's a little bit left in there it's gonna be very cinnamony <laughs> is that a word cinnamony so you want the consistency to be fairly thick so you want it to not drop off the spoon very quickly. You want it to be thick. I hope you can see that on the camera, how thick that's getting. But you want it to be pretty thick. Because remember, this is uh, kind of like a jam or a jelly kind of thing. You're spreading this on bread. This is not applesauce. So you want it to be fairly thick which it, it is pretty much for the most part. I imagine once it cools down, it'll be even thicker. So I think it's about done now. Time to take it off the heat and put it in the jars for canning. All right, we're gonna put them in pints because we don't use them that quick. And we saved all our apple cores. If you've noticed uh, in this bowl, we have all our apple cores. And what we're going to do with that is uh, we're going to put those in uh, half gallon jars and make vinegar. Make, we make our own vinegar. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. So time to jar up the apple butter. I don't know how close I can get to the top. 
I think it said a quarter inch in the ball book. However, most things they tell you one inch head space. So that's what I'm going to do. We're doing one inch head space. That's a space in the top of the jar before the lid. And the reason you do that is because when you're canning, your stuff expands in the canner and it might push the lid off and not allow it to seal. So we don't want that to happen, so we don't want to overfill it. And uh, as you can see, I'm filling them. And my kitchen helper here is uh, wiping off the rims, making sure that they're clean before we put the lids on. We want those to be good and clean, not sticky, not having food on them, because it will interfere with the seal. Now, sometimes when you are, uh, after you place your stuff in the canner, it will uh, have some food come out, and that's unfortunate when that happens. Uh, a lot of times it will seal anyways, but sometimes it won't. And so you want to try to prevent that as much as possible. You don't want food between the rim of the jar and your lid. So today we're going to make vinegar and you're going to need water, a wooden spoon, a nice big old jar, a one cup measuring cup, sugar, and fruit. And today we're using just some scrap apple pieces that came from our garden after making apple butter. So you want to put a little bit of water into your jar and you want to get about one cup of sugar and you want to put that into your jar And you want to take your spoon and just kind of mix it up to help it dissolve a little bit. If it doesn't all dissolve, that's okay because it's going to sit like this for a long time with the fruit and everything in it once we get it all put together. And then you just want to start filling it up with your fruit pieces. want to have it about three-fourths of the way full so about like that and then you want to fill it the rest of it up with water this is our filtered spring water okay so the water that you can put in with your vinegar you can use really basically any kind of water that you want and if you live in the city and you want to use the water that you get just prepare your water in advance. Get your water, take as much as what you think you're gonna need, put it in a pot and let it sit out overnight so that the chlorine can evaporate out because chlorine in your water will actually not help it to make into vinegar. As the fruit is breaking down and the sugars are breaking down in your jar, it will start to produce alcohol and it'll get fizzy and bubbly. As that progresses, all of that alcohol will work itself out, then it will start to form into vinegar. And the way you want to have all of that escape, the gases and the alcohol and stuff, is that you're going to just get a little piece of cloth, and I just have a dish towel, <laughs> and a rubber band, and then you just put the rubber band over your top of your jar, and then you just let it sit on your countertop. And then you put it somewhere where you're not going to forget about it. And because if you're anything like me, if you put it somewhere and you don't see it every day, you're not going to remember to stir it. So put it somewhere where you're going to remember that you're just going to see it every day so that you remember to stir it. And you just take your little rubber band off and your thing and then get your wooden spoon and, and push it down, stir it up real good and put your top back on. Okay, so at the end of your vinegar, your fruit will kind of, it'll break down, it'll get mushy, it will probably sink to the bottom. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna strain the fruit out. So you strain the fruit out and you keep the liquid. 
you might get something that looks kind of funky on the bottom. It looks kind of like mushy, like a sponge. That's actually a SCOBY, and you can look it up if you want to learn more about it. It's actually kind of interesting. But it's a type of bacteria that forms on your vinegar. And if you have that, if you have that SCOBY on there, you can actually save that SCOBY and you can use it to um, help you start another batch of vinegar. So it's kind of like if you make sourdough, it's kind of like, you know how you have a sourdough starter? It's kind of like the same thing, except it's for a starter for vinegar. And so that's all you need to do to make vinegar. Easy peasy. All right, time to can. Get all these in the canner. Uh, this canner, this is a water bath canner. And uh, basically it just it just boils, not a pressure canner, water bath canner. And uh, that's what this food needs. So if you saw our apple harvest video where we made a bunch of apples in the applesauce, we had a different canner on there. That was also a water bath canner. This one's just a little bit bigger. That one is a seven quart. This one, well, it holds seven quarts for processing. This one will hold nine. So we could get more of our pints in here. So that's why we're using this one today instead of the other one, in case you had noticed that. Uh, so yeah, this one, you can only get, this will hold nine quarts for processing, or you can fit in 15 uh, pints. So we just want to do one round today. So we have all our pints in here. It's full. Anything that didn't fit, uh, there'll be maybe a little bit that'll be for fresh eating. But basically, that's what we're getting out of this today. So it's roughly uh, all those apples that you saw, uh, the, uh, the crab apples. And we put about just as much in weight, probably, of our own apples with that. It's cooked down to about eight quarts of apple butter or 16 pints. It's a few days later and it is morning time and I'm gonna have me some of this apple butter. Pop the lid off of there. Have some homemade bread. I've made some toast. Give it a little stir and see if I can get it on there. Look how thick this stuff is. See if I can get that on there. See how thick that is. It does not come off the knife. <laughs> very hard to get off it, uh, to fall off. It, it's very thick, very good. I like a lot of apple butter. We'll put a lot on there. Mmm, that's wonderful. Very good. That turned out very well. It's got a lot of cinnamon flavor in it. It's not overly sweet. We don't add as much sugar as what some others might. We're, we like a little sweetness, but mostly we like the natural sweetness. We did add some sugar, so... But it's very good. It's it's uh, very much to my taste, anyways. And it's very much to the family's taste as well. We had opened another jar the same day and finished it off the next day. And this is a few days later that I'm doing this part of the video. There, there is a little bit of the tartness uh, not much there there's it's very uh sweet and cinnamony 
uh, but th there's still a touch of that tartness there. Yeah, it turned out real good. <gasps> Sounds like there's some others who want to try some, huh? Well, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to receive notifications when we put out new videos, hit the notification bell. We'll see you on the next one.